Today I'm going to be showing you how to screen print these super easy color in trick or treat bags from start to finish. So the first thing to do, of course, is to design and print your artwork. So I got this design from So Fancy's website. We have a deal with So Fancy where we send you out a code every single month. It's also listed on our website. I'll have it linked below for a free design um, download. So you can download this design for free or of course you can purchase it as well. But we downloaded this design from our So Fancy icon art shop and then use the program vector to quickly turn it into an outline to make it like a coloring book page super easy to do and if you would want a tutorial that shows this a little bit more in depth or step by step just let me know in the comments otherwise i'll just speed through it really quick so that this video isn't super long but basically you just change the fill to white and the outline to black you know adjust it a little bit and then make it the size you want it i fit it onto a full eight and a half by eleven sheet um, to make these nice size bags and then you print your design making sure to adjust those print settings so that it prints nice and dark so once you have your artwork printed you're going to make your stencil and you make your stencil like many other videos that i've shown but basically you take your artwork you lay it down on your stencil film and use the icon art exposure stand to expose it and then take it to your sink and wash it out and you will see your design appear like this. After you wash it out completely, just dry it. We always like to blot off the excess water a little bit first before drying, either air drying or we're using our film dryer today, but you can also use a food dehydrator or like a hair dryer on really low heat. And then once it's dry, pop it back under your exposure light for two minutes and then you're ready to use it. So now that we adjusted our artwork and made our stencil, let's get into making these bags. So the first thing I did is prep all of my bags. I'm doing four bags today. And to prep them, you can see they're really wrinkly. You can obviously iron them, but I'm just going to stick in a tacky mat. And I have a tacky mat in all of the bags. I like to get these all prepped before I start, whenever I'm doing multiples in a row. And this tacky mat is gonna help for a couple different reasons. It is going to hold the fabric in place while you're screen printing. And it's also going to protect from bleed through so ink doesn't get from your top layer onto the back. And it also holds your fabric super nice and flat. So as you can see there, I just got rid of all my wrinkles. So once I have all my bags, prepped, I'm ready to screen print. So you watch me make a stencil. I'm just going to cut a little notch off the corner there. And I just do that so that I know which side to replace the clear backer sheet to because the stencil will be reusable, of course. So after I use the stencil and wash it out, I want to return it to the same side as this. So that's why I do that little notch. So I'm just going to add my stencil and push it down. And I'm gonna be doing these four bags in a row. And I'm using the Speedball Fabric ink. My favorite screen printing ink. And I'm just going to put um, a piece of paper towel off to the side over here. That way I can set my stencil over there in between bags as I'm kind of like moving in between them. I'm not able to hold it in my hand. All right, so I'm just gonna take my squeegee, dip it in my ink, and pull it across. So I just kind of glide over the top. This is a textured surface, what I'm screen printing on. So I just want to kind of glide over the top making sure I use enough pressure to get the ink in all the openings, but I'm not pushing too hard where like ink goes underneath my stencil. Just kind of gliding it over the top, kind of like buttering bread. So then when I get to the end, I'll just kind of 
glide it over the top, making sure to get rid of any of these like extra lines. I don't want any like globs on there. And then when I remove my stencil, I'm just gonna lift it up very slowly. And if any areas need more ink, I'll go in right away. I've never screen printed on this type of fabric before. So it kind of takes a little bit of playing around to learn the pressure. But this looks really good. Yeah, that looks great. So now you can either set your stencil off to the side on a paper towel, or I got some ink on my hand, so I wanna kinda of get that off of there. Um, or you can just hold it in your hand like this and move the bag off to the side. And then when you're doing your second one, you don't have as much wiggle room as far as repositioning it. So you kind of want to get on there good right away. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it and using the edge of the stencil to sort of center it. And then I just set it down like that. I'm not like rubbing or pushing down. I'm gonna use the pressure from the squeegee to push it down as I screen print. You could also use a hinge frame for this or like a screen printing setup, but I'm just doing four, so I figured I would just do it this way. It works just as good. It is a little bit trickier um, now that there's already ink on the stencil to see where you already screen printed. So you just kind of got to be a little bit more careful with your um, like ones after your first one so that you kind of remember where you screen printed on the stencil already. But you can always use that method where you lift up the stencil really slowly and if there's any missing ink in many areas you just lay your stencil right back down and add more ink. So I'm pretty sure I covered the whole thing. So now I'm just gonna remove all this extra ink I have on here. And I'm just kind of gliding over the top. And I'm not working super quick, but I'm working quick enough. I don't want this ink to dry in my stencil. Uh, the, the Speedball screen printing ink is pretty forgiving, but I still like to work relatively quickly. Usually I have like wet wipes. <laughs> around so that I can wash off my fingers. I'm gonna set the stencil over here this time. That one still looks really good. Okay, so now for this one, I'm just going to gently set the stencil on my paper towel like that and move my bag out of my way. I can try not to get any of this ink that I have on my hands on my bag. All right, and then I will just repeat that process two more times. Just take this to the sink to wash it out. So once you have that all washed off, just lay it upside down and take your backer sheet and match up that corner that you had cut, or if you wrote the word back on it, um, that works too. But just go ahead and match that up corner to corner and lay that back on there. And 
once that dries, your stencil will be reusable and you can make more bags if you want. You can make color in t-shirts or a puzzle or um, any kind of color, like coloring book type design. All right. So now I'm just gonna let my bags air dry. If you want to speed up the process, you can use a heat gun to dry them faster. If you do do that, just make sure to take out the tacky mat before using your heat gun because the heat gun will distort your tacky mat otherwise or, other, or use it on like super low or cool heat if you are going to keep your tacky mat in there for some reason. Um, but if I do speed up the process by using a heat gun, I always make sure to remove my tacky mat first. And then once my design is totally dry, I can just hit it with an iron really fast to set that ink and lock it in place, and then they'll be ready to color. So as you can see, that was super easy to do. I love using Icon Art to screen print multiple items like this. It's so fast, so easy. I would have hated to weed this out of vinyl. <laughs> And I'm so excited for the kiddos to color them and use them this weekend. You can join our Icon Art Crafters group on Facebook to see the finished product. I will make sure to post that after the kids color them in. My name is Fawn and I share tips and tricks on how to make and use Icon Art stencils. If you're just getting started with Icon Art, make sure to check out this video right here where I go over the seven most common mistakes we see when making Icon Art stencils. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you get notified every time we upload.